The sound is okay. I'm feeling like a reverb, reverb back here anyway. How's the sound, Hayden? It's good. All right. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Coast Mountain Bus Company's offices, and thank you for being here uh, this morning. Um, we're here to celebrate another step in the rollout of phase one of the 10-year vision for Metro Vancouver for improving transportation and transit here in Metro Vancouver. We have a number of special guests with us uh, this morning that I'd like to both recognize and extend uh, my appreciation for their attendance and support. With us is Mayor Lois Jackson from Delta, Honorable F Peter Fassbender, Minister of Community Sport, Cultural Development, and Minister Responsible for TransLink, Tim Lewis, Co-Chair of the Handy Dart Riders Alliance, Hayden Atchison, President and General Manager of the Coast Mountain Bus Company, Don Johnson of MV Transit, the operator of our Handy Dart service. Uh, as well, Jane Dyson, the Executive Director of Disability Alliance BC. Thank you for being here to help us celebrate this important announcement. I'd also like to uh, welcome other members of the Handy Dart user community who've made time, their time to be here this morning. You're among the many voices that have championed the greater investment in Handy Dart. This is an important day for me. It's an important day for the region. It's an important day for, for the customers of TransLink. We're here to celebrate the continued rollout of improved service that we expect to be rolling out repeatedly over the next three years as part of the, to the recently adopted phase one 10-year uh, vision. We're delivering on some billions of dollars in transit and road improvements to our region to maintain its livability and economic competitiveness. In January, it started with more frequent service on our rapid transit network, improved service on the Expo and Millennium lines, improved uh, peak hour service on Canada line, and additional C bus service. And today, we announced the next step, an addition of 85,500 uh, trips to Handy Dart in 2017. More trips will be introduced throughout the next three years, and by the end of 2019, we will have increased the number of trips by 171,000, a some 15% increase in service. That's the reveal. I didn't practice that. And, and it, I think importantly, I want to point out that um, as we were working through the plan with the Mayor's Council, uh, Mayor Jackson representing the Mayor's Council today, um, Handy Dart service was so important that we front-loaded the investment in Handy Dart. Half of the, the three-year plan for Handy Dart is happening here in 2017. And that just, that just illustrates the importance that the mayors, the TransLink board, and TransLink team place on improving Handy Dart service. Handy Dart is a door-to-door -door service for people with physical and cognitive disabilities, helping users travel across the region. And you know, with the recent wintry weather, Despite our best efforts, our services have been impacted by poor road conditions at time. And the weather has um, further underscored the importance of services like Handy Dart to uh, maximize mobility for our residents in this region. Regardless of the weather, we've remained committed to getting customers to critical medical appointments because we know they depend, we, they depend on us to get them there. Hospitals are the number one uh, destination for Handy Dart trips, followed by day programs, colleges and universities, stroke recovery clubs, Semianu House. So this is about mobility. It's about people getting around. It's about freedom. I, I view Handy Dart as about freedom. Clearly important medical appointments, but making sure that people with dignity to get from point A to point B, that's the importance of Handy Dart. With this investment, um, uh, part of phase one of the 10-year plan, we're excited about being able to immediately start providing more trips for our Handy Dart users. Now, it's my pleasure to um, introduce one of the leaders of our Mayor's Council, has been struggling to get our, our investment plan in place for, for many years, and, and they did a great job. And I was so proud to see what the Mayor's coming together throughout the fall uh, to improve Phase 1. The plan was, was adopted uh, by the Mayor's Council on November 23rd, and I'd like to introduce Mayor Jackson, who was instrumental in making that happen. Well, good morning, good morning. Isn't this a great day? Great day. And ladies and gentlemen, it's a, a pleasure to be here today to celebrate this important investment in transportation for the myriad of people with physical and cognitive disabilities, including many, many of our seniors. 
Yes, and uh, we must continue to work towards improving access to transportation for all of our community members, but in particular to our many seniors and many of our most vulnerable people who are unable to help themselves. How are we gonna accomplish this? Well, I think Mr. Desmond spoke about this a moment ago. And at the moment, Handy Dart provides a critical service. And combined with accessible bus stops and buses, is helping to make it possible for seniors and people with disabilities to get to where they need to go all across this region. You know, it has been uh, identified by many that the numbers of seniors and the vulnerable persons at risk is increasing, ladies and gentlemen. So with this in mind, I'm pleased with the work that TransLink continues to do to address accessibility concerns. And I'm really encouraged by TransLink's response and with the progress made in recent months. So what's the result of all that work? Well, TransLink has been doing some major things and this very important investment is only a part of the phase one of the 10 year vision for Metro Vancouver transportation. Therefore, over the next three years, phase one of the vision will introduce a total of 171,000 new handy dart trips per year. And by 2019, TransLink, as Mr. Desmond said, will offer 15% more handy dart trips per year compared to 2016 numbers. As you may recall, the phase one of the vision is comprised of a $2 billion plan for expanding transit service and helping to reduce road congestion throughout this region. And this announcement encompasses only a part of this phase of the funding. Ladies and gentlemen, as a long time advocate for people with mobility challenges in Delta, I am especially pleased to welcome this critical increase in assessing handy dart services, offering users greater flexibility and more choice. At, as the recent uh, report from the Office of the Seniors Advocate shows, progress has been made on improving access to transit and transportation for people in our region, but there's still much needed work to be done. While phase one of the 10 year vision provides an increase in handy dart trips and relief for overcrowding on transit and congestion on major roads, phase two will enable TransLink to take the next steps in expanding and improving the region's transportation network to meet the demands of our ever growing population. And just as a side note, I'm sure you've all seen the new census figures out. And you know, this region, is continuing to grow and we need expanded services. We want to build on the momentum created by the phase one plan and we want to continue the partnership between our local, regional, provincial and federal governments that has resulted in important investments. As one member of the region, I am pleased at the progress we are making in our continued liaison with both the federal and provincial governments. From my perspective, cooperation, constant consultation and understanding are key elements to moving ahead with the 10 year plan. May I welcome and encourage continued participation and involvement by our senior government colleagues. Mr. Fassbender, Minister Fassbender, of course, from the province of British Columbia, thank you so very much for being here and for continuing to work diligently together with us to ensure that the needed funding for all the, from all the levels of government is secure. Secured funding is needed in order that phase two can be accomplished, keeping the 10 year vision on schedule for the benefit of all of us. Again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for being here today to receive this very welcome news. Thank you.
Thank you, Mayor Jackson. Uh, and now it's my pleasure also to introduce um, uh, Minister Fassbender. He's the minister, as I said, of community, sport, cultural development, and minister responsible for TransLink. And as Mayor Jackson said, we can't build this 10-year plan without partnerships. We need a partnership with the federal government. We need a partnership with the province. And the, the province has been with us. Phase one, instrumental in helping to fund phase one, and we look forward to that continued partnership to get us over the finish line with phase two. Minister Fassbender. Well, thank you, Kevin and Mayor Jackson. I, I'm absolutely delighted to be here. I bring greetings from Premier Clark, the members of our government, and Jane Dyson, I wanna thank you for being here because I know what a strong advocate you've been for the community that you serve so well. And of course, as the province, we not only are excited about this phase of in additional investment in HandyDart here, but as you know, Minister Stone announced uh, last year $12.7 million to increase and enhance HandyDart services throughout the province because we have many people with the challenges that uh, they face throughout the province and we're committed to that. This expansion is absolutely critical and front end loading it as uh, Kevin Desmond said, really recognizes how we need to focus on people who have challenges and who need the support to get around. And it's not just medical appointments, it's to enhance their quality of life. And that's why I'm delighted to see this as part of phase one. As Kevin and Mayor Jackson said, as the province of British Columbia, we're continuing to work with our federal partners, with the local regional mayors, and looking at how we continue to build on a vision that is gonna serve every person who lives here, no matter who they are. And needless to say, there's always challenges when it comes to funding, we all know that. But the reality is the vision is clear. The province of British Columbia supports the vision and we're gonna to continue to work to find that. We're, our federal partners are committed. We don't know what the next phase for phase two funding is gonna be, but when they make that announcement, that's gonna bring clarity to the province and to the region as to what we need to do to move forward. So there's lots of ideas, there's lots of effort, but at the end of the day, it takes great leadership under Kevin Desmond and his team and TransLink, who I have always admired the hard work and the dedication to look at what the priorities are. And I know that persons who have mobility issues and seniors, I know both my mother and my, my mother-in-law used Handy Dart extensively to get around. It is a service that gave them the ability to move around when I wasn't available to take them, which I always wasn't. So I think we are making some major strides. You see around us the other investments as part of phase one, but at the end of the day, it takes a strong planning team at TransLink to pull all of this together to bring the recommendations forward. I wanna thank the mayors. We've made progress. A lot of people said, are we ever gonna get over the finish line? Well, we're gonna continue to work together to do what we all need to do to the benefit of every resident of Metro Vancouver and the region. So thank you very much and again, great work to Kevin and his team and we look forward to continuing to work together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. Uh, and now it's also my distinct pleasure to uh, introduce uh, a stalwart a uh, advocate uh, for people with disabilities, for Handy Dart, for accessibility of our transit system. You know, it's not just about Handy Dart. It's also about SkyTrain. It's also about our buses and making sure that we have as accessible a system uh, as possible. Tim Lewis is the co-chair of Handy Dart Riders Alliance and he's my friend. Thank you, Tim, for being here and please welcome Tim Lewis. Good morning. You know, when uh, government and the community are at loggerheads, not much more gets produced than a lot of acrimony. When government and the community work together in partnership, a tree of positive solutions is planted. About a year ago, that tree 
was germinated. Over the last year, it was nourished and it flourished. And today, we witness the fruit on that tree. Candidate service level improvements. For the first time ever, higher and faster than that in conventional public transit. Over the three-year phase one, handy dart service levels will increase by half as much again as conventional public transit. That's never happened before. And the news gets even better. As Kevin mentioned, that 15% increase front-loaded. It will not be laid out 555 five, five over a three-year period, but half of it in the first year. And what he didn't tell you is that it's even better than that. Because even before the three-year phase one plan began, that is last year, 2016, before the three-year plan had even begun, Kevin, a fairly new CEO at TransLink, came across a hidden and forgotten drawer somewhere in TransLink, opened it up, and used the money in it to begin to implement the three-year funding increase a year early. That's the fruit of a positive partnership between government and the community. And I want to tip my hat to Kevin for having brought about that partnership and for having ensured that the fruit on that tree was produced and is here today. We know that Handy Dart is so much more than just moving individuals from point A to point B. Somebody calls in, gets a trip turned down, they are homebound for the day. They are sentenced to house arrest. Flip side of the coin, they get the ride, and it's not just moving that person from point A to point B. When more and more people with mobility issues join the workforce, when people are out and about in their neighborhoods volunteering, when people are in their community making use of goods and services, we all benefit. The neighborhood is made stronger. The fabric of the community is strengthened. The economy is stimulated. So I hope we all leave today with a very different view and understanding of the benefit of handy dirt. It's not just moving individuals from point A to point B. It's strengthening neighborhoods, communities, and the economy. The Handy Dirt Riders Alliance recognizes what TransLink recognizes, that this 15% increase can be by the down payment on the service level increases that will be necessary as we move forward. Necessary because there is a demographic tidal wave on the horizon. We're all getting older. Seniors are making up a larger and larger percentage of the population. Folks with mobility issues are joining the workforce in greater and greater numbers. The built environment, the architectural environment, becomes more and more accessible every day. And with all those effects, demand on handy dirt will continue to outstrip demand on conventional public transit. But with the positive partnership between Kevin TransLink and the handy dirt community, that partnership tree will continue to produce the fruit in the sense of higher service levels in phase two and phase three and so on. Thank you very much, Kevin. Thank you to the organizers of today's event. Behind the scenes, the
people that made this press conference possible. Thank you to all of the senior TransLink staff and to the minister and to the mayor. Thank you very much. Anyone have any questions for Minister, the Mayor, Tim, or myself? Yeah. It, it's it's basic. We have one of the advantages that we had uh, with Handy Dart, which enabled us to front load, is that we did have fleet available. So it was easy to, in that sense, just apply additional service hours to the contract. So it's, it's 45,000 service hours, which will be applied throughout the 12 months of the year, which, which translates into a little bit over uh, 85,000 trips. So it's, it's just additional dollars for additional trips. We, we, do, we have not, over the last number of years, uh, the ability for, for TransLink to provide handy dark service has been more or less flat. But we know, as, as you heard from Tim, the demand is out there. Uh, so by uh, adding these service hours throughout the year, we're, we're, we're managing to meet at least some of the demand going forward. And that's why getting the entire 10-year plan um, ultimately funded um, to continue the growth in Handy Dart, as you heard from Tim, the demographics alone will be driving demand. So this is a really good start uh, on what we really have to do over the next 10 years. It's, well, it's so about 50% half of the, the 171,000 trips that Mayor Jackson mentioned will be this year and then in 2018 and 2019, roughly equal increments to get up to the 171,000 trips. Uh, current, hold on. So the current number of um, handy dart trips is, I believe, 1.2 million annually. Louise is nodding. So it's about 1.2 million trips uh, annually for handy dart. Yes. Taxis, taxis are about last year about 10% of the total trips within the handy dart universe. Uh, we call that supplemental service. Uh, it needs to be part of the service. I think it's an important part of the service. It's a challenging part of the service. One of the things we've heard from users is, is driver training. Uh, I think we do probably a better job of that in Vancouver, where the Vancouver Cabs and the uh, uh, Taxi Cab Association in Vancouver has done a really good job of emphasizing the need for training. We need to do better um, outside of Vancouver on, the, on, the, um, on that training. The exact proportion of, of cab trips may fluctuate going forward, but they will be part of the future as well. We know that many of our customers actually prefer cabs because they're a little bit easier and more flexible. Um, for folks with different challenges, we need to make sure we're matching up the type of trips they need with the Handy Dart van. No, it's in, 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 in this world, in Handy Dart world, and the services in the United States where, where I'm from, um, cab service is a really important supplemental part of the service. It'll always remain a smaller part, but a very important supplemental part. Yes, yeah, yeah the cab drivers. Yeah. It was tough. Um, each time we've had um, a snowstorm, um, and as the streets deteriorated and the sidewalks, uh, you know, and just getting up to somebody's house or, or apartment building uh, gets very challenging. We've gone on to essentially lifeline 
um, uh, services. So Handy Dart was very much affected um, during each of the snowstorms. Uh, fortunately, we're back to normal, beautiful, beautiful Pacific Northwest weather now. Um, and, and we hope that the snow is uh, behind us. I understand Mayor Jackson likes the snow, I heard her say. Uh, I like, as, and I, as I heard Mayor, uh, Minister Fassbender said, he likes the snow on the side of the road. That's where I like the snow as well. But yes, it was affected, and we appreciate the patience uh, that our Handy Dart customers had during each of the snow, snow events. We're always looking for, for reviews, whether on the bus service, uh, one of the main things we want to do, we've already started these discussions with each of the municipalities, each of the cities, to talk about um, if and how they can further prioritize snow removal and de-icing on our major corridors. That's really, really important. The bottom line, though, at least for our rubber tire service, the handy dart and the buses, we're only as good as the streets that we operate on. And again, that's further, I think, exasperated in the handy dart uh, service type. It's not just the vehicles getting up um, to the pickup. It's also, you know, for, for our customers and their ability even to get to the van safely. Yep. So in 2016, um, out of the roughly 1.2 million um, trips, we had uh, just about 3,500 denials, or 0.03% of the system. This is really important. And as, as Tim mentioned, um, middle of the year, um, our handy dart uh, manager over here, Louise Hardy, um, said, look, we're, we're, demand is continuing to outstrip our financing. And um, candidly, knowing that, that the promise of, of the mayors eventually being able to adopt the phase one plan was looming, and, and I thought it was a good uh, risk to take. We added budget um, at the end of the year through our contingency in the second half of the year to start um, beefing up trips right away in anticipation of the mayors uh, adopting the plan. So it was a little down payment to meet the demand at that time, and it helped manage the denial. So the denials are a very small portion um, of the overall trips, but it's important to get that number down more and more, and I think adding this service that we're announcing today will help us uh, manage that. Anybody else? Uh, the number of people uh, registrants is about 23,000 people are registered currently for Handy Dart. Okay, thank you. <laughs>